a loss is a loss. Whether you lose a football game by one point or by 50, it still is going to go down in the L column. And Nebraska had way too many of those L's in 2015, losing quite a few games that they know that they could have won. The Hail Mary loss to BYU, double OT defeat against Miami, and a pair of two-point losses to Wisconsin and Northwestern. And the Illinois game that had poor clock management, and it came back to bite the Huskers in the end. Entering this season, Nebraska has another chance with a lot of skilled players back on offense to get it right. Of course, the key to making this Nebraska offense be consistent is that guy, Tommy Armstrong Jr., who's been a part of this program for a while, now entering his senior year. He's definitely athletic enough and has the arm strength, but isn't always accurate. 55% complete percentage and an embarrassing 16 interceptions. Man, to state the obvious... Just get the damn ball to the receivers. I mean, Nebraska has the capable hands and the experience to back it up. Jordan Western Camp is going to be Armstrong's most reliable target. But don't forget about Brandon Riley, who made the game-winning catch against Michigan State last season. When Nebraska runs for over 200 yards per game, they win. Now, I know they like to throw the ball a lot, but when Nebraska dips below 200 yards rushing for a game, regardless of how the passing game went, Nebraska loses more than they win. So Terrell Newby, we'll see if he can get at least 1,000 yards rushing. He almost did it a year ago. Offensive line, you return the left tackle, Nick Gates, and Dylan Utter at center, but you have to replace everybody else, so that'll be a challenge. No doubt this season, the Huskers will be playing with heavy hearts. The raw Big Ten punter from a year ago, Sam Pulse, was killed in a car accident just this past July. Now let's talk about the Nebraska defense. Very few teams had success against the Huskers on the ground. Biggest reason, the defensive tackles were solid. But Nebraska loses four with playing experience, including two who got picked in the draft, including Malik Collins. We'll see how the freshman, Khalil Davis, handles the pressure of big-time college football, along with his teammate who has a little bit more experience in Kevin Maurice. The defensive end, this guy, his stock will continue to rise. Freedom, Akam Mullendoon. The linebackers got to be able to get to the quarterback. Last year, Nebraska only had 24 sacks as a unit. So Josh Banderas and Derek Young will definitely have the microscope on them. And then if you're looking at defensive backs, they were not good at pass defense. But again, that goes hand in hand with the front seven. So front seven get pressure. Then Nate Jerry from his safety spot should have a better year along with Joshua Kalu from his corner spot. It's not out of the realm of possibility for Nebraska to start 7-0. That is, if they can defeat the Ducks and the Wildcats the following week. Of course, the problem is of their five remaining games, the three road games look like ones they'll be underdogs in, especially in Columbus against the Ohio State. Big Red's win total will improve, but there's still questions to answer on defense, and the way that schedule finishes, I think Nebraska finishes short of winning the Big Ten West Division.